The history and bizarre behind-the-scenes drama surrounding Community has been well documented at this point. A premise based on creator Dan Harmon's own experience attending Community College, Harmon's story circle writing method, poor ratings, Chevy Chase voicemails, sexual harassment, Harmon fired from his own show, the gas leak year, cast departures, cancellations, reunion, hashtag, and a movie. And if you don't know about these things, well then feel free to click over to my other video, The Day Community Died, where I go into all these aspects in more detail. The heights of Community's creative excellence is only matched by the volatility that surrounded basically every aspect of production. When I watch the show now, with the knowledge of the bubbling tension underneath everything, I'm really amazed that such a brilliant and funny show was still able to emerge. And the show's legacy only seems to be growing as more people continue to discover community on streaming platforms and with its cast members going off and finding success after the show. But what made Community so special? And what's the first episode that perfectly balanced all those creative elements together? Well, come along as I search for The Day Community Was Born. But before we do that, I want to take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video, Atlas VPN. It was really easy researching for this video, because here in the United States, Community is streaming on Hulu and Netflix. But if you're in a different country, you may not be able to stream Community, or maybe another one of your favorite shows, because of licensing rights or geo restrictions. But with Atlas VPN, that's no longer an issue. You can set your VPN to a number of countries around the world and instantly have access to that country's catalog of content. You can finally watch what you want, when you want. Atlas VPN was developed by top cybersecurity specialists and IT engineers back in 2019 with the goal of making the internet accessible and secure for everyone. And with currently more than 6 million users, they're well on their way. Enjoy the most affordable online protection for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day back guarantee. Enjoy blazing speeds when streaming your favorite shows, protect all your devices with a single subscription, and stop ads and malware attacks at the source so that way your personal information stays safe. In today's world, having a VPN is really just a no-brainer. I mean, I love how it unlocks so much content around the world that I otherwise wouldn't have access to, but besides that, it's so easy to have your information, data, money, and privacy stolen online. So again, protect yourself and protect your family by clicking the link in the description below. When you use my link, you'll get 82% off a three-year plan, which again comes to only $1.99 a month. And with the 30-day money-back guarantee, you can check out everything they have to offer with zero risk to your wallet. The pilot episode premiered on September 17th, 2009, and even though it's a strong episode that immediately established the type of gags and pop culture references that would permeate the show throughout its run... No, Dad! What about you?! That, that actually was from The Breakfast Club. There were still aspects that needed tuning, specifically with the characters and the overall tone of the show. This isn't a knock against Community, this happens with all television shows. You only have 21 minutes in the pilot to establish as much as you can, but you can't do everything. The first season is all about making time for fine tuning and organic growth. Chang wasn't even introduced until the second episode, Spanish 101. In Espanol, my nickname is El Tigre Chino. Ah! Characters were largely one note like Annie, who was introduced as a Tracy Flick-like foil for Jeff. What board certifies a tutor? And Troy, who was this cocky, arrogant jock. You're a stupid jock who lost his scholarship by dislocating both shoulders in a keg stand. Keg flip. They're very hard to pull Don't off. To both so wildly different from who they would become in later episodes. Throughout the first season, all the characters were given more space to properly flesh out. One of the exciting aspects of a show's first season is also seeing which characters have organic chemistry. The writers spent the first season trying and testing relationships like Annie and Troy in episodes like Football, Feminism, and You, Home Economics, and Romantic Expressionism. Troy and Abed's friendship started as little stingers at the end of episodes. Buenos dias, me gusta papas frias, bigote de la cabra, pescamarón, dias. 
Yeah, boy. Before they got entire storylines and episodes, like in Advanced Criminal Law, Politics of Human Sexuality, and Environmental Science. I like you, Jeffrey. You remind me of myself at your age. Jeff and Pierce had this father-son, mentor-mentee relationship in a lot of season one episodes, with sage wisdom given and a lesson learned at the end of episodes like Spanish 101, social psychology, introduction to statistics, politics of human sexuality, basic genealogy, and beginner pottery. Good luck, Pierce. Don't eat it. Never had it. One of the dynamics that impresses me the most throughout the first season is the relationship between Jeff and Annie. From the pilot episode, it's clear that the show was pitched with a romantic through line between Jeff and Britta, but by pairing Jeff and Annie, they found chemistry that really worked in episodes like Debate 109 and Basic Genealogy. You're becoming dangerous, Annie. Just those doe eyes. Disappointing you is like choking the little mermaid with a bite chain. The writers listened to that chemistry and let it drive the show, as opposed to forcing the show in a direction just because that's what was planned from the beginning. And that paid off beautifully with the unexpected twist in the first season finale. The other main element that was honed over the first season was the show's overall tone. As I said earlier, the fast-paced gags and pop culture references were there from the pilot episode, but what Community really became known for and revered for were the episodes that went full parody or genre homage for the entire episode. Community played with these tonal shifts briefly in earlier episodes like Introduction to Statistics, when Abed narrated as Batman watching over Greendale. I am Batman. Or am I? Yes, I am Batman. Beginner pottery, when the students sailed across the Greendale parking lot to save a drowning Pierce, and the science of illusion, when Annie and Shirley served as temporary security guards chasing Jeff across campus before getting reprimanded by Abed acting as the chief of police. Agitating my sciatica. I'm too old for this. But once they started committing to these tonal shifts for entire episodes, that's when community elevated itself creatively. Much like Harmon's story circle writing method that gives order and structure to chaos, these genre episodes excelled because they were still grounded in reality with small, believable stakes for the characters that were treated with utmost seriousness and reverence. Modern Warfare had a campus-wide paintball fight over priority registration, Remedial Chaos Theory sprouted multiple timelines in order to determine who would go grab the pizza from downstairs, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons was an effort to help encourage a bullied classmate. Digital estate planning had Pierce fighting for his inheritance. Pillows and Blankets turned into a Ken Burns-style documentary about Troy and Abed's strained friendship. Epidemiology had a zombie outbreak at a campus Halloween party. Basic Lupine Neurology was a law and order style investigation into a sabotaged biology class experiment. And Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas was a claymation episode used to process Abed's grief of losing his mother. These episodes broke convention, stepping outside the classroom, study room, and away from normal college campus antics. In these episodes, Greendale became this shapeless blob that could take the form of whatever the narrative called for and the parodies were treated with 100% commitment and sincerity. There was no winking at the camera. Everything was serious for the characters. And perhaps most importantly, these episodes weren't a pause or break away from the overarching plot lines and character development spanning the show. These episodes were canon, and the insane situations helped exaggerate the characters' personalities, desires, and insecurities. If you ask someone to name their favorite community episodes, these are the types of episodes that would most likely be mentioned. They felt unique and different. I mean, I know these were the episodes that I would talk about and share with my friends as I tried to convince them to give the show a chance. For example, here's my list of top 10 community episodes. And notice how each episode is a parody or genre homage. 10, Paradigms of Human Memory. 9, Documentary Filmmaking Redux. 8. Epidemiology 7. Critical Film Studies 6. Basic Lupine Neurology 5. Cooperative Calligraphy 4. 
conspiracy theories and interior design, three, advanced Dungeons and Dragons, two, remedial chaos theory, one, modern warfare. Again, these episodes work so well because the beginning of the first season lays the groundwork. It establishes conventions, so that way these later episodes could then break convention. Establish the characters, the world, relationships, dynamics, personalities, and then in these insane situations, you're able to warp them or twist them on their head. So now back to the question at hand. What's the first perfect episode? Well, there were several strong episodes in the beginning of season one, but the first episode that perfectly embodied the balance of characterization and genre parody that Community became known for came in the episode Contemporary American Poultry. To us, lines were for suckers, hacks, sheep. We were wolves. And we had the chicken to prove it. This was the first episode that went full genre parody and highlighted just how special Community could be. Keeping the stakes small and realistic, the storyline revolved around an underground operation to skim chicken fingers, the most desirable commodity from the school cafeteria, and use them for power and influence across campus. And the story is told using references and parodies to the mobster genre. There's a famous shot from The Godfather, but a majority of the references come from Goodfellas, like direct quotes. It's like a mafia movie. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be in a mafia movie. Cool. Abed's underlying narration, like Henry Hill. The crazy thing was, it was their food. And we were stealing it and giving it back to them like it was a big favor. Continual doo-wop music playing underneath montages. By not respecting us, Starburns had basically brought it on himself. And when his job opened up, we did what we had to do to keep the list of applicants to a minimum. And the fall of the operation played to the iconic track, Layla, by Derek and the Dominoes. Again, these small stakes of chicken fingers around a community college were treated with the utmost sincerity and gravity, and the flat-out commitment to the genre parody helps elevate it. To our characters, this isn't a joke. This is life or death. He released Annie's boobs. Annie's boobs could be anywhere. Annie's boobs could be on the side we of the road. We got it. The monkey's name is Annie's boobs. And these insane situations also let us see different shades and explore different facets of our main characters. We see what it's like when Jeff loses control and when Abed gains control of the group. We see Pierce's desire to be cool and Shirley's desire to be, well, desired. Contemporary American Poultry was the first episode to go full-blown genre homage. And only two episodes later came Modern Warfare what many fans consider to be the best episode of the entire series. And these episodes paved the way for the rest of the seasons where episode-long parodies became the norm, continually challenging the ideas of what a sitcom could be and highlighting just how special Community was during its six-season run. Now seriously, where is that movie? The show's gonna last three weeks! Six seasons and a movie! Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and share it with a friend. Also, leave me a comment below. Tell me the day that you think Community was born. Just in some way engage with this video so that way it'll appease the algorithm gods to do their job and to push this video so that more eyeballs can see it. On that note, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed below and also click that stupid bell below. I'm gonna keep saying this until I'm red in the face, but YouTube isn't sharing my videos with you. I have so many people who reach out and say, man, I haven't seen one of your videos in months or maybe even a year. Where have you been? Well, YouTube's not sharing my videos with you. And if you're not checking your subscriber tab to see where your subscribers' new videos are coming out, if you're hoping to see me on the main page or your homepage, that's just not where my videos are going to populate, unfortunately. But by clicking the bell below, you can be notified whenever a new Entertain the Elk video comes out, and that way you can ensure that you never miss a new video again. If you're looking for ways to help support the channel, there's a few ways you can do that. One is by checking out the sponsors that I'm working with. Use my special link below, see what they have to offer, especially if it's a free trial, because that means there's no risk to losing money, and that way you can see what they have to offer. 
and the more people that click my link just motivates them to want to work with me more. Another way you can help out is that Entertain the Elk now has merch. There's t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs. It's a way to show your love for Entertain the Elk, but it's also a practical way of just supporting the channel because everyone needs a t-shirt and everyone needs something to drink their coffee and tea out of. The last way is by becoming a patron. I'll have a link below so you can go check out my page and see the exclusive rewards and offers I'm giving to people who support this channel. It could be something as simple as a dollar a month or a dollar a video. Patrons get exclusive rewards, like behind the scenes content, early releases. I'm also working on some exclusive merch for patrons. If you like this channel and just wanna help me make more videos, please do one of those three things and it would really just mean the world. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I will see you all next time.